Hey! Now get a call off the Russian nightmare! And you're watching the number one show on Long Island with Monty and the Pharaoh. I'm having one time with Monty and the Pharaoh. And I'm gonna put him in a cross face chicken and he's gonna go down right now! Yeah! <laughs> What's your read on my partner here? <laughs> he's nutty. <laughs> but funny. Funny and nutty. <laughs> I know. Wrestling was uh, a work of art to me. You do it right, it's like boxing, it's an art, you know. And uh, first of all, you keep, you stay in condition, just for your looks. If you go in the ring and you're out of shape, <laughs> people notice it. You, you might not like it, but they notice it, you know. You, their eyes don't lie, you know. And work hard. I always treated the wrestling fans like, uh, the best I could. Very polite. They asked for an autograph. I stopped signing autographs. Uh, even some people didn't like me. I, I didn't mind. You buy a ticket, you're, you're allowed to boo, you're allowed to cheer. And uh, where did our income come from? The wrestling fans. People say, oh, well, the promoter pay me. Where did the promoter get the money? From the wrestling fans. And you'd be surprised when you go to these smaller towns in, in the old days, you know, there was a lot of people, that, they took the, all their kids to the wrestling match. You know, they spend their hard-earned money on entertainment, come to see the wrestling. You know, without wrestling, <laughs> without my, without the fans, there's no wrestling. Mm. Period. You know. So we I, asked Tommy earlier, and it's kind of off script, and now that you're bringing it up, is were you ever requested to maybe make hospital visits for sick oh, children and things like that? What was the, how did that feel for you? Terrible. It's heartbreaking. I went to see a kid in the hospital in uh, in Atlanta. They have a children's hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, I was at the TV station, and this lady came in and asked me to go to the hospital to see her kid. And I went, and it was hard to take. I have a hard time talking about it. Mm. He died three, four hours after I left. Mm. Yeah, so after that I was, uh, but I went, you know. I just, because, uh, you know, kids, why do they have cancer? Why do they, and he tried, he was shaking my hand and he was just, I had a hard time breathing, you know, his little hand. And uh, at the time I didn't think he was going to die that day, you know, but he died after that. Mm. What's your, what's your his mom sent me a card wrote me a letter. Mm. What, what's your take on uh, famous athletes or slash celebrities who resist the idea that they're a role model and that they don't have to bear any responsibility being in the public eye? How do you feel about uh, that sort of attitude coming well, from Well, they're full of themselves. Mm. You know, they don't care about anybody. You know, they, they, they think because they're in the limelight, they're stars or whatever they want to call themselves. You know, no, you, you're just like the rest of us. We, we, politicians do that too. They think we're better than us. Uh, a lot of entertainers. People that are making today millions and millions of dollars, they big contract 20 million, 50 million. You know, where did they think the money come from? You know, if nobody watched them, nobody, everybody tuned them out, what would they be? Hmm. You know, they put their leg from pants one leg at a time. You know, <laughs> they know better than we are. People like that, I, I don't understand. I don't do it. I, I could never do that. And never forget where you come from. You know, that's, that's, that's another, you know, I, I was born and raised very poor. And I got very lucky in life. First of all, when you're healthy, 
you thank the good Lord every day for it. You know, you you can be healthy as heck in, uh, in one moment and your career is gone because you're sick, you come down with a disease. You know, there's a lot of people who don't appreciate life. They don't appreciate every single day you wake up, I say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Don't hang around with people who are no good. You know, and I'll tell you what, I'm... <laughs> I don't want to brag, but that's one thing I think I'm pretty good about is I can read people. <laughs> Believe me. Because my, my wife was impressed a few times. I said, that person is no good. So what's, what's your read on my partner here? <laughs> He's nutty. <laughs> but funny. Funny and nutty. <laughs> I know. Is he a good guy? Uh, oh, yes. Yes. All right. yeah, he's got a good heart. So you, you were, you were probably rooting for him to throw yeah. me under the bus he's, because you I, love controversy. Let me, let me tell you hey, something. what do you think of my buddy next to me? <laughs> what do you think? Good people. He, he I, thank you. Him. Well, he is. He's, he's good fantastic. people. I'll tell you, people that are funny are having a good time in life. There you go. Okay. Due to all the mass shootings, this uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has decided to take stop. Hit Me With Your Best Shot off her stop. concert series. Stop, stop, stop. Why? Why? Because in the title, there's the word shot. Everybody knows that this song is about a chick who's saying to a guy, hey, you're hot. Hit me with your best shot. Is that We're what that's about? Of course it is. You're a real tough cookie with a long history of breaking little hearts like the one in me. Hit me with your best shot. Not whip out a gun and blow away a million people. What is this? This is too sensitive. Stop it, Pat. Ronnie? It's too sensitive. I'm laughing so hard here. <laughs> <laughs> How's he gonna follow that up, Ronnie? What do you think? All right, okay. I, we'll go to we'll go to something else, maybe it, something it, more it, my it's speed. Too extreme. <laughs> Changing the, the person the, reports the, in the post today. What? I saw feet in the toilet and realized I just gave birth <laughs> to a baby. This woman I, took the term <laughs> special delivery to new limits. <laughs> Lucy Jones of Bristol, English, <laughs> England, got a big surprise last month when she gave birth to a daughter, Ruby, in the bathroom. <laughs> The new mom, <sighs> new mom claims she never knew she was pregnant. Oh, of course the not. The 22-year-old who believed it was a she burrito. recently got in her period said right. that she just hit what? the toilet the plans on pushing out poo. <laughs> when, she, when she heard a crash and looked down and there were two feet sticking out of the toilet. <laughs> Farrow... <laughs> How do you not know you're pregnant? <laughs> nine months went by. What'd you think you had a tummy ache for six of the nine? You, what'd you thought you gave birth to a burrito in that bowl? This is ridiculous. What is wrong with this? Did they take the baby away? No. They're gonna let him let it, the baby stay with someone who didn't even know they were pregnant. This baby is screwed. Hey, I think that happens <laughs> more often than you think. Really? Yeah. Oh, look what I found in the toilet. It's got feet. And crying? This is normal? Wow. It happens. Oh, We this. got Ric Flair deciding at the age of 73 that he's going to get back in the ring. Uh, he's even confirmed recently that he's got an injury from his training and he's sore. That's his words. What do you think about Ric Flair giving this a shot at 73? Well, I wouldn't do it if it was me. Because uh, I want to leave the impression and when I quit. That's what's in your mind. That's because if you step in the ring in the seventies, your body doesn't look very well, very good. I don't care who you are. <laughs> you know, I hate to say that, but if you're not embarrassed, you know it's a choice. You know, I wouldn't do it personally. You know, and plus you can get hurt. I mean, you know, you get a certain age. I'm seventy-seven years old. Uh, I don't want to break a leg. I don't want to break an ankle. Uh, I've seen it happen when Lutez went over to Japan and he was just doing a demonstration of holes with Inoki and his hip popped out, mm. you know, because your bones are a, a whole lot more fragile at 70 some years old and uh, it's easy to get hurt. The oldest guy I wrestled might have been Ox Baker. Ox Baker? Yeah. But he was still, you know, maybe not in the greatest shape, but he, he was no push around. You know, and I remember I broke all his teeth, his false teeth. Oh. Mm. I dropped a knee drop on his throat and his false teeth popped out of his <laughs> mouth and I stomped him in the ring and I took all the teeth and I... And Did he the, get pissed off? He, oh. No, he I had gum eat, afterwards. I he just stink, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I saw him before he died about a month or two at some uh, signing that I was. 
I can't remember where it was exactly. And he, I liked the guy. He was a character. Yeah. He saw me from across the room, and I heard him like he was three feet in front of me. Hmm. You know, and he called me the bus saw. He, he he would holler. He called me a bus saw because I used to like to stomp his toes. <laughs> Question I have for you is, you get the title from Flair. And your push get up to that point was huge. The fans were behind you, everything else. Why do you think it didn't work out to the expectations that we all thought it was going to be? Well, that was by design. You know, uh, a book has a lot to do. Of course. And there was uh, some envious people. You know, I've seen it many times with other guys. You know, uh, you get over too big, you're a threat. You know, it doesn't become anymore where they, how much money you're drawing is, you know. And the booker, you know, did his best to, I never got booked, I never had a title match after I won the title till I wrestled Ric Flair on the second time. You know, why? You know, I didn't really care at that point, you know, in my career, because I was ready to retire anyway. I was 45 years old, you know. I was in good shape. I wasn't retiring because I was—I had any problem. I was very healthy. But there comes a time you gotta call it, you know. And when that happened, I'd even pushed it faster because I quit after that. I quit the promotion, you know. And, and the booker, well, you all know who the booker was, you know. He was hired by Crockett and he, uh, he didn't like the idea of somebody being more over than he was. See, I always was against a wrestler being a booker, you know, because they pushed their own self. So you, you're drawing money, and, but it didn't matter. They just wanted... Well, it didn't, it didn't matter to him, hmm. to his boss maybe, but his boss was mesmerized with him, you know. Was, really. He bought him a brand new Mercedes, What's up? His, his business. I'm not, but I'm saying, you know, he was controlling a lot of things. And that same guy, the, the Booker, the Rock and Roll Express were so over, they were like rock stars. Well, he couldn't handle it either. He would book him in some small towns, you know, and those guys would sell out. The little town that never had a crowd like that at wrestling matches because they were over like rock stars. And then what he did is he booked himself in six-man tag team so that could rub off on him. So he was in a six-man tag with him. <laughs> you know, I'm not stupid. I've been around a long time, you know, and I could see all of that. You know. But you don't, seem a guy, you don't seem like a guy that would stand for that. Did you approach him at any point and be like, what's your no, deal, dude? I, 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 I never wanted to let him know. I, I didn't need the promotion. I didn't need them. I could quit working a little, probably five years before, you know. I didn't care. I, I, I'm not going to play that game. You know, I'm not going to play that game. Then why do you put the title on you? Uh, because I think it was the owner. You know, they wanted it. You know, but in a way, he didn't control much of anything. You know, because I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really care. And uh, I enjoyed the ride. It was short, but. Did you ever discuss ever discuss things with Flair when this was all happening? Yeah, Flair. Flair was okay with it. But uh, the thing was, <laughs> I never seeing the standard in the business was when you lose the title, it's automatically a return. Right. Automatically. Yeah. It was since yeah. the day I got into wrestling. Never had one. Never defended the title. Never had, you know. So, you know, it's bad business. You know, that's why I said a wrestler should, that's involved in, in the wrestling, if he's active, he should not be in the booking, uh, you know. Because, you know, you're gonna eat, a booker is going to take of himself. It's natural. Maybe not all of them, you know. They usually have a, in the old days, we had bookers that were ref, uh, wrestlers that were retired. They weren't wrestling anymore. But that's okay, you know. They don't have much to gain by that. The career is over, so now they, they're they doing the booking to draw money for the company, you know. And But, uh, yeah, that's what it was, you know. 
they try to blame it on uh, maybe I, I read some articles about uh, McMahon taking over, you know, stopped the, the pay per view, you know. We didn't, we lost the pay per view on that one, you know. But it, you know, all I can tell you is Joe Louis Arena was packed. Mm. It was sold out, you know. Hey, you can't do any more than that. We didn't get the pay per view, so we lost a lot of revenue, you know, because there was a fight internal there with. You know the promotions. Yeah, McMahon pulled the strings to stop yeah. you guys, and yeah. that's that's what yeah. happened, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So I wasn't to blame. We sold out the place. Mm -hmm. And another mistake they made is uh, they took the live event out of the Carolinas. That's their base. That's their base. They insulted the people. Sure. You know, they did. Greensboro had never been the same. Any satisfaction of seeing uh, that certain uh, Booker in polka dots years later? Oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> he, I watched him. I, I liked him. When he started in the business, I used to ride in the car. He rode with me in the car. Uh, Murdoch and all that back in the 60s. But they mm -hmm. weren't Booker. He was not a Booker. He was right. not involved. He was just like one of the boys. So something changed uh, yeah. over the years. Yeah, something. And I loved it. Because I watched him insult Vince quite a few times. I mean, insult, knock him on TV, you know. Mm -hmm. And when he went over there, he wound up with polka dots. Mm. And I said, Vince is a genius. You know, he hired, he keeps the guy, he hired the guy. A lot of promoters would have said, go screw yourself. You know, go somewhere else. No, come on in. Vince took him in because he made money with him, with right. polka dots on him. But he got his little revenge. You know, because, you know, there's the American dream turned into a polka dot boy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't help it but laugh. Yep. Vince McMahon, the allegations, and your thoughts on the person, well, Vince McMahon. Well, I'd have to wait. Uh, I personally find it very hard to believe. But today there's so many people accusing people, you know, of all kinds of horrible stuff that never happened. And I'll tell you, ever since that uh, the politics with Russia that never existed what they were saying. You know, the, the, the conspiracy, you know, conspiracy and all that and uh, never, never happened. You know, and I turn the computer on sometimes and there's stories that, you know, they're lying. There's so many, too much lying. You know, and right now, where's the proof? Somebody accused, you know, you gotta wait till they can prove it. I, I think without Vance, wrestling is gonna be hurt. Agreed. I think. Agreed. You know, I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, like I say, I, it's hard for me to believe because, you know, <laughs> but, you know, I want to wait and see before I make any comments that, you know, uh, if he'd done that, uh, I'm so sorry that, you know, he's not the person that I thought he was, mm. you know. It's a great take, Ronnie. That is a great take. You know, and if he did... Well, you'll have to deal with it and, and, and pay the price of the consequences, of, you know. Because you know, I've always thought that they were a very classy family. Yes. You know, his wife and daughter and son, you know, they were classy people. Do you feel that the company's in good hands considering that it should logically go to Stephanie and Triple H to uh, continue running things? Do you feel like Vince has set up, you know, through his family you know, a future for the company? I, I think so. He's a very, very smart guy. You know, very smart guy, because they, they said he was going to fail. There was, there was so many people against him, you know, when, when he, he, he took over the whole wrestling, actually, and, and he took it over because it was there to be taken. You know, he had offered a lot of promoters money. They told him to go screw himself. You know, and I was around the guy, ah, he's going to fail, he'll never succeed. They, that, and... It succeeded. Was Randy more like Angelo and Lanny was kind of the oddball? Lanny ball? was a happy-go-lucky guy. You know, really, he was, I like Lanny. He, he, he didn't care about much, you know, he just liked to have a good life. What would you think of the name Lanny, though? Lanny? Like, I always thought, like, why'd you name this guy Lanny? Leaping Lanny. Forget Leaping, Leaping Lanny. I Leaping just, like, just makes it. I mean, is that his real know. name, Lanny? It's his real name, yeah. right? Yeah. That's yeah. an odd name, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
you know, here's my son Randy. <laughs> and here's this kid I really don't like that much. Here, <laughs> Laddie. <laughs> was Andre difficult to work with? Or was he, what was Andre like? Andre, if Andre liked you, he'd give you the moon. And he's just having to like me, and I don't know why. You got I had him, we had him, my wife and I had him over, maybe because I spoke French, you know. Uh, but from day one, you know, he was he was a gentleman. Did your wife have to cook for Andre when you, know, you had him? You know, he didn't eat very much. He didn't eat any more than I did. He Really? What? He drank a lot. Just drank a lot. Just yeah. drank a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one plate of food is all that. Wow. My wife thought, oh, my God, yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah. Cook two pigs and a, and a whole. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you have them over? The, no, hold on. You have them over the house. Hi, right? <clears throat> hey, honey. I'm bringing Andre the Giant. Yeah. But, uh, hey. Where's he sitting? Uh, we had. We, funny if enough. We had one big chair, uh, rustic. You know, it was heavy, heavy duty chair. Okay. And that's what he sat on. So your wife's like, I got the perfect chair for this guy. Yeah, it was like an antique thing, but it was. <laughs> and you're a wood, you're a woodsman type. At least you strike me as that. Did you have a big outhouse in the back for this poor fella? I mean, <laughs> after the one plate of food, I. Well, you know, it's funny. You I say don't that. know. It's probably, I just why, it's probably you know, why you didn't eat so much, right? That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, Holy he was full of liquid. Oi. <laughs> he drank. He drank a lot. You, know, you mentioned drink. earlier about. But guys. he was a. He was a. Good soul, man, I tell you. Yeah, well, you're very fortunate he just naturally liked you because we've yeah. heard stories of when he doesn't like somebody. That's it's oh, not yeah. a good place yeah. to be. Yeah. Not a good place to be. Well, I was with him one time. With the, I couldn't believe it. I was in New Orleans. And we went on the Bourbon Street. My wife was with us. And we had the guy from Canada, the big, big guy. He was his interpreter. See, when, when I did all that, he hadn't been in the States very long. Mm. His English was not very good. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he understood. He understood a lot of English. Anyway, we're coming out of Bourbon Street, going back to our car, and it's three o'clock in the morning. And there's a couple coming by us, and there's this guy was about you know five foot seven, five foot. He looks at Andre and he says, "What a freak!" Oh, call him a freak. Wow, oh, boy. Andre picked him up with the shirt, <sighs> lifted him up, and he went. <laughs> like a slow motion. He would have killed him if he hit him hard. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His hand was so he heavy just took it, he and just, sick, you know. He, I think he knew his, his strength. He know. did. Okay. But he knocked him out. He dropped him on the side. <laughs> the guy, and the wife is screaming. So he picked him up a second time, and he went another one. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a slow motion, you know. And you heard the puff, you know. Wow, wow. And he dropped him again. Yeah. And I said, we're going to jail. So I said, let's go. So we started going towards the car. And we turned the corner, and there's our car. And I said, man. We don't, I don't hear no sirens or whistles or anything. So we got in the car and we drove off. Never wow. heard him. Never heard a word wow. about it. But that woman yeah. was screaming. Your Speaking. thoughts on Gorilla Monsoon and, and Bobby Heenan, who, by the way, rest in peace to his yeah, wife yeah, who passed yeah. away recently. Oh, I, I saw him about two, three years before he died. I was at a, at a signing. He saw me across the room and I could hear, ah, I <laughs> Oh, I felt so bad. Mm. I didn't know he had throat cancer. Right, right. Know? And he gave me his book. You know, I wanted to pay him. And I, he said, no, I don't want no money. You're insulting me if you give me money. He was a funny guy. You know, he make you laugh. I made trips with him. <laughs> Jeez, he, he was always he was always joking. You know, it's like there was no serious moment. You know. How about Gorilla? Gorilla, I didn't know him that well, but I liked him. You know, he was a big guy. And, you know, he treated me good when I was in, in, in New York, you know. I wrestled the, the, the Rougeos in Montreal, 1985, and uh, well, they come from a family that, you know, very popular in Montreal. His dad was probably one of the toughest guy <laughs> in Montreal, you know, and Johnny, you know, Johnny was like a king of there. He was, he was like Hulk Hogan of Canada. Mm. And uh, when we went there and we, we wrestled the Rougeos, you know. And uh, we beat the hell out of them. And the, their dad came in the ring. He was at ringside. He came in the ring. And when he came in the ring, I, I got him and I body slammed him and I climbed the top rope and came out on his neck. Mm. And they carted him to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Oh, people. And well, the whole thing started when they came in the ring, Precious pepper sprayed them in the face, you know. She had that uh, spray stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 
I, I beat the hell out of Raymond, and we Pearl Arbored them when they came through the ropes, you know. And uh, I never thought this was going to go anywhere. It was just, to me, it was pretty normal, pretty regular. But since it was the Rougeos, you know, people were pissed. Mm. I mean, God. So I wound up staying four or five months. Everywhere we went, we sold out. Yeah. Everywhere, the whole province, we sold out. And that was that grudge lasted the whole summer till probably the end of uh, August. Of, uh, yeah. And uh, I was leaving in, uh, in September, you know. I told him I wasn't up there. As, I wanted to wrestle once a week, just deduct all my taxes, you know, one match a week. And uh, first of all, now I'm, I'm wrestling almost every night in, in all the cities all over the Chicoutimi, Quebec. And, and, uh, and we had the big blowout uh, uh, in, in, in uh, August, I think it was, at the Montreal Forum. And guess what's on the front page of the newspaper? Record crowd ever in the Forum in Montreal. My mom and dad were so, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't mm. believe it. Yeah, mm. the biggest crowd ever. Who was, in your opinion, the toughest guy you ever got in the ring with? The toughest guy. Since uh, you are the quintessential tough guy, anybody? Uh, God, that's, that's a good one. There, yeah, there you go. Uh, I think Aku. One more time for me. Aku. 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 Damn, so his reputation is, he's yeah. known as the baddest mofo oh, in the business. he's a bad, but he's a good guy. As long what makes as him so bad? Him. <laughs> what, is it, what, what is it about him? What makes him so bad? We've seen bigger. We've seen, uh, what, what is it? His size don't matter in a fight. Not in that one, huh? Not with this oh. guy. God damn. Oh, he's, he's, he's a very strong guy. I mean, <laughs> he's, uh, his, his ability at fighting is, is unreal. Wow. You know. But I like to work with him, you know. I did. I enjoyed it. I didn't work with him, but maybe three or four times, three times maybe. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Damn. And All he's right. a good guy. He's age a, age old question then. Andre the Giant or Bruce Lee, who would have won in a fight? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Who's winning? Oh, I think Andre would. Uh, you you think know. Andre would take yeah. Bruce Lee? Yeah. I say the, I say the same thing. I'll anyway. Mr. Garver, thank you for joining us. Thank you for I coming really on our show. It. You're the man. You I are a legend. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you.